This video provides an overview of the key concepts covered in Chapter 13, Supply Chain Management and Logistics. Managing a supply chain requires numerous operational activities, including working closely with suppliers, purchasing, transportation, inventory management, managing risks that may disrupt the supply chain, measuring supply chain performance, and ensuring sustainability. An important component of supply chain management is called logistics. Logistics is the management of transportation activities and the flow of materials within a supply chain to ensure adequate customer service at a reasonable cost. The logistics function is responsible for selecting transportation carriers, managing company-owned fleets, vehicles, distribution centers, warehouses, controlling efficient interplant movement of materials and goods within the supply chain, and ensuring that goods are delivered to customers. Underlying the effective management of supply chains is the Supply Chain Operations Reference, or SCORE model, which is a framework for understanding the scope of supply chain management, or SCM, that is based on five basic functions involved in managing a supply chain. Plan, source, make, deliver, and return. Planning involves developing a strategy that balances resources with requirements and establishes and communicates plans for the entire supply chain. This can include management policies and aligning the supply chain with financial plans. Sourcing includes procuring goods and services to meet planned and actual demand. This includes identifying and selecting suppliers, scheduling deliveries, authorizing payments, and managing inventory. Making, of course, includes the transforming of goods and services to a finished state to meet demand. This can include production scheduling, managing work and process, manufacturing, testing, packaging, and product release. Delivering includes managing orders, transportation, and distribution to provide the goods and services. This entails all order management activities, from processing customer orders to routing shipments, managing goods at distribution centers, and invoicing to the customer. Finally, returning includes processing customer returns, including maintenance, repair and overhaul, and dealing with excess goods. This could include return authorization, receiving verification, disposition, and replacement or credit if necessary. Inherent in supply chain management is purchasing or procurement which is the function responsible for acquiring raw materials, component parts, tools, or services, and other items from external suppliers. Managing relationships with those external suppliers is very important, and there are three general principles for working effectively with suppliers. The first is recognizing their strategic importance in accomplishing business objectives, such as minimizing total cost of ownership. Second is to develop win-win relationships through long-term partnerships, rather than treating suppliers as adversaries. And third is establishing trust through openness and honesty, and therefore leading to mutual advantages. Another element of supply chain management includes supply and value chain integration. Supply chain integration is the process of coordinating the physical flow of materials to ensure the right parts are available at the right stages of the supply chain, such as manufacturing assembly plants. A non-manufacturing example of this would be Walmart, which very tightly controls the supply chain from suppliers all the way through its own distribution network to individual stores. Value chain integration is the process of managing information, physical goods and services to ensure their availability at the right place, time, at the right cost, at the right quantity, and with the highest attention to quality. Walmart also engages in value chain integration as well by leveraging EDI and other technologies to facilitate fast flows of orders directly into supplier systems, electronic invoicing, and payments back to suppliers. As noted earlier, an important element of supply chain management is logistics. Logistics managers have two primary responsibilities. The first responsibility is purchasing transportation services, which can include selecting appropriate modes of shipping and mix of specific carriers, contracting with suppliers for domestic and global transportation services, negotiating transportation rates and shipping, insurance and liability contracts, managing international trade agreements, customs laws and import or export fees, and using business analytics to evaluate different shipping options. The second key responsibility of a logistics manager is managing inventories and the movement of materials and goods through the supply chain. This can include managing the flow of goods through warehouses and sometimes shipping directly to retail stores and customers, tracing shipments in transit and expedite them when necessary, coordinating shipments with airports, rail yards, and seaport docks, issuing and auditing freight bills, and filing claims for damaged goods. Despite great efforts to manage the supply chain, companies often face a multitude of risks in managing supply chains. Risks in domestic supply chains are often minimal, however risks in global supply chains are much greater. These can include production problems with suppliers that result in material shortages, labor strikes, unexpected transportation delays, delays from customs inspections or port operations, political instability in foreign countries, 
natural disasters, or even terrorism. As a result, firms must engage in effective risk management. Risk management involves identifying risks that can occur, assessing the likelihood that they will occur, determining the impact on the firm and its customers, and identifying steps to mitigate the risks. Supply chain risk can fall into one of two general categories. The first general category is tactical risk, which consists of three types of risk. The first is inventory risk. Examples here might include warehouse and inventory stockouts, back orders, and imbalances between work centers. Ways to mitigate inventory risk could include adding safety stock, reducing lead times, and adding inventory buffers to work in progress. The second tactical risk is capacity risk. Examples of capacity risk could include equipment shortages, overproduction, and even employee strikes or layoffs. Ways to mitigate capacity risks might include scheduling overtime, using multiple suppliers, and adding a backup pool of workers. The third tactical risk is logistics and scheduling risk. Examples here could include supplier quality and delivery problems or long lead times. Some ways to mitigate these types of risks can include adding safety stock, increasing lead times, or partnering with local transportation firms. The second category of supply chain risk is strategic risk. The first strategic risk is global economic risk, which might include exchange rate risk, regulations, or even natural disasters. And ways to mitigate these kinds of risks can include managing locations, having disaster plans, and sourcing suppliers in multiple countries. The second strategic risk is government risk, which can include intellectual property rights and protection, and even tariffs. Ways to mitigate government risks can include global legal teams and multi-country outsourcing. The next strategic risk is product risk. Examples here can include modifying a product to meet cultural differences, forecasting errors, or product obsolescence. And ways to mitigate product risk might include better planning and forecasting, outsourcing, or even hedging inventory. The last strategic risk is security risk, which can include system downtime, cybersecurity, and theft or fraud. Ways to mitigate security risks can include technology upgrades, backup sites, and even hiring criteria. E-commerce has also greatly influenced the design and management of supply chains. Here's an e-commerce view of the supply chain, which includes the familiar players of suppliers, sellers, and buyers. Note that there are two additional players you might not be familiar with, intermediaries and return facilitators. Intermediaries are entities that are either real or virtual that coordinate and shares information between buyers and sellers. For example, doing business in Taiwan or China is generally done through an intermediary that can assist with navigating local laws, language, and cultural differences. Return facilitators specialize in handling all aspects of customers returning a manufactured good or delivered service and requesting their money back, repairing the manufactured good and returning it to the customer, and or invoking the service guarantee. One might think that this is handled by the firm that sells the product, but not always. For example, Zappos relies on UPS and FedEx as their return facilitators. Another key component to effective supply chain management is measuring supply chain performance. There are six general performance measures for the supply chain, ranging from delivery reliability to basic financial measures. Delivery reliability is measured by perfect order fulfillment. Responsiveness can be measured by order fulfillment lead time and perfect delivery fulfillment. Customer-related measures typically include customer satisfaction or even net promoter score. Supply chain efficiency measures include average inventory value, inventory turnover, and day supply of inventory. Sustainability measures can include energy reduction or CO2 emissions. And finally, financial measures can include total supply chain costs, warranty or processing return costs, and the cash-to-cash -cash conversion cycle. Another key element of supply chain management is sustainability. In recent years, there's been a strong push towards a green sustainable supply chain, which uses environmentally friendly inputs and transforms them through change agents, whose byproducts can improve or be recycled within the existing environment. For example, Apple heavily promotes its products as being PVC free, made from recycled aluminum and other materials, and even manages the recycling of its products returned by customers. Many companies are developing options to recover manufactured goods that may be discarded or otherwise unusable. This is often called manufactured goods recovery and consists of seven general activities. Companies might reuse or resell the equipment and its various component parts directly to customers once the original manufactured good is discarded. Furniture, appliances, and clothes are examples. A firm may repair a manufactured good by replacing broken parts so it operates as required. PCs, vehicle parts, and shoes are examples of physical goods that need to be repaired. 
Businesses can refurbish manufactured goods by updating looks or components, for example, cleaning, painting, or perhaps replacing parts that are near failure. Products may have scratches, dents, or other forms of cosmetic damage that don't affect the performance of the unit. In fact, Apple makes a good business in refurbished products. Companies can remanufacture a good by completely disassembling it and repairing or replacing worn or obsolete components and modules. Honda, for example, remanufactures vehicle steering mechanism controls for sale as dealer-authorized parts replacements with the same warranty as new parts. Businesses can cannibalize parts for use and repair of other equipment of the same kind, such as automobiles, locomotives, or airplanes. Companies can recycle goods by disassembling them and selling their parts or scrap materials to other suppliers. Aluminum soda cans, for example, are often melted and formed into new aluminum sheets and cans. Finally, there's incineration or landfill disposal of goods that are not economical to repair, refurbish, remanufacture, or recycle. Finally, firms may engage in something called reverse logistics, which is managing the flow of finished goods, materials, or components that may be unusable or discarded through the supply chain from customers toward other suppliers, distributors, or manufacturers for the purpose of reuse, resale, or disposal. Reverse logistics includes five key activities. There's logistics, which includes authorizing returns, receiving, sorting, testing, refurbishing, etc. There's marketing and sales, which includes remarketing and selling the recovered goods for reuse or resale to wholesalers and retailers. Of course, accounting and finance has to approve warranty repairs, track reverse logistics revenue and costs and billing, and pay suppliers and third-party vendors. There might also be call center service, which is managing service center calls along the supply chain to coordinate work activities such as collecting items from diverse sources for recovery operations. And finally, there's legal and regulatory compliance that involves consistently monitoring compliance with local, state, federal, and country laws, import and export regulations, including environmental and service contract commitments. Here's a visual of what a supply chain looks like and where reverse logistics might actually take place. We often take for granted that we can go into a store, hop online, and buy just about anything we want without appreciating the often deep and complex supply chains and logistics necessary to bring those products to stores or directly to our doors.